Oh, okay. No, it looks like I can record it from my phone. All right then. Good. Sorry. Sorry for all the logistical nightmare. Uh, no, it looks like there are no problems. Okay. Um, we should get started then. Um, we're, we're very happy to have uh, Michael Geller here. He's been doing some uh, really interesting, innovative uh, approaches to the, the hierarchy problem using, uh, well, naturalness problem using uh, uh, cosmology and, and dynamics. Um, so excited to hear from him. Uh, and um, let, me, let me mention beforehand that after the talk, uh, we're going to do um, a, a short five minute break just to let people stretch their legs. And then Michael has uh, kindly agreed to, to have an extended discussion with us uh, where we can uh, chat uh, casually about, about things. Um, um, Michael, if you want to take it away. Okay. So thanks a lot uh, for having me. Uh, it's, so my talk is going to be about this uh, paper I was really excited about that came out uh, like a month ago or so with uh, Chaba Raffaele and Chaba student uh, Amin. Uh, and it's going to, we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to argue for a new approach to the hierarchy problem, basically mixing ideas from anthropics and from model building uh, to, to get a predictable uh, and I think an interesting new scenario. So, so let me start with the uh, introduction you have heard before many times about what, what is naturalness. So if, if I want to put it in the, in the way which I like to say it is that it's essentially a, a, a problem of uh, how to UV complete the standard model. So we know that uh, once we once we complete once we we do that once we UV complete the standard model into a fuller theory, uh, there is uh, uh, a requirement on that theory uh, to have some very unnatural connections between different parameters in that theory uh, for for that theory to to agree with the observations uh, that we see, and that is what we know as the naturalness problem or the fine tuning problem. And, and essentially, we know, we know that these UV completions are necessary uh, at the Planck scale, at, at, at the worst case. Uh, and we know, and the, the one thorn in, 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 in this uh, 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 problem is that it's, it gets worse the higher, uh, higher you complete that theory, the standard model into that uh, fuller theory, whatever that is. And we can see that from the low energy, and we know that, that uh, we see in the low energy it appears as these uh, uh, quadratically divergent loops contributing to the Higgs mass. So essentially to, to, to get the, the correct Higgs mass, we need to have uh, uh, a very weird theory in the UV. It's not a problem per se, but it's very weird, and we probably would like to see theories that don't have this problem. Uh, and we can uh, we can separate the solutions to this problem into two broad classes, where one I would call the ground state naturalness, and that is the the solutions we all know and love. And here, ground state just means that uh, we're going to have models where the uh, uh, Higgs mass is predicted to be small. And not uh, 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 and not large, the order of the cutoff, uh, uh, and that that property is going to be true in the true ground state of the theory. So there's nothing weird going on with with uh, the the vacuum structure of the theory. It's just that uh, there's going to be some symmetry or something like that that protects the Higgs mass, and we all know the supersymmetric solution or the composite Higgs solution. Uh, so this is an example of that. But there's, there's uh, been a second class which was for years uh, less uh, 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 researched and less, uh, uh, and, it, and it received less attention in the literature. But, but I think it's also a fascinating idea. Uh, and that is the idea of what I call metastable naturalness. And here metastable means that in the, uh, so in the, in the true ground state of the theory, the Higgs mass is actually large. And you wouldn't, if you were there, you would not say there is a, a, a anything wrong with the theory. 
But it just so happens to be that we are not in that ground state. We are in some metastable state, uh, which is cosmologically long lived, but still metastable. Uh, and uh, uh, that metastable state is special in some way. Uh, and that the, the, the property that is special is the thing that is responsible for the Higgs mass in that metastable state being uh, actually small. And uh, uh, special in uh, uh, one way is anthropics, uh, which means that it's, uh, there's a selection uh, criteria that selects this metastable state according to, uh, uh, in, uh, in the case of anthropics, uh, the existence of life. But there's also have been this new idea of the relaxion where some cosmological dynamics selected that special metastable state, which had the, the small Higgs mass. So that is the second class of ideas in this class of ideas, you won't see anything weird with the theory itself. It's just that the state you're in is is not uh, is not the true ground state. Okay, so uh, we know that we haven't found anything at the LHC, and in particular, no top partners, and uh, that puts us in tension with ground state naturalness, which predicts, which typically predicts some form of top partners. Obviously, there 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 are some models that are still alive. But it's, uh, uh, well, I should say, a lot of them have been already excluded, and that's enough, I think, to start thinking in another direction. And the problem with anthropics, uh, first and foremost for the Higgs, is that there's actually no bulletproof argument for, for, uh, for the Higgs, unlike the cosmological constant problem. For the Higgs, you really need to uh, speculate, I should say. And, uh, uh, and that seems... Uh, 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 and it's very much unlike the cosmological constant problem where galaxies would just not exist if the cosmological constant was too large. Here, it's, uh, 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 there's, there's no such argument. So this is uh, essentially where we started working and started thinking about this. So first of all, just to, to set the, 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 the stage, the first thing I want to say is that even though some of us don't like anthropics and, and Yes, there's, there's, there's a lot of very well-founded criticism. Uh, the idea itself, scientific or not, is very fascinating, I think. Uh, and it's brilliant in, in, in a way. But the problem is that we, we are doing science and we want to see some predictions that we can uh, uh, measure in experiments. And usually we think that, that anthropics, as it has been uh, uh, proposed, has usually no predictions. But what, what, what we are going to argue in this, in this talk and in our paper is that it's, anthropics is just an idea and the predictions really depend on how, how you apply it. And what we are going to do is the, we're going to use the, the basic idea of, of anthropics, but instead of trying to tie it to life somehow, we're going to concentrate on model building and uh, finding a, a bulletproof uh, uh, I should say, well, I should say we'll find a model where uh, the, the, the application of anthropic solves the, the hierarchy problem and uh, also gives predictions. So let me uh, uh, go right into to the idea. So, so, so in our idea, the Higgs mass, like in, in, in other landscape approaches, uh, for instance, the relaxion or, or, uh, or the, the anthropic idea, the Higgs mass is going to have uh, different values uh, that are possible in the theory, or if you want, there's a there's a landscape where in different vacua, the Higgs mass has a different uh, 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 value. Uh, and what we're going to have is we're going to have a mechanism in which having a Higgs mass above the electroweak uh, scale uh, will cause uh, the the observable universe that that, uh, that the, the, uh, this happens in, or the patch of the universe where that happens, to be destabilized and uh, destroyed, or, or if you want to undergo a, a big crunch. And, so, and that will happen very early on in cosmology, so that the universe is only going to expand when the Higgs mass is electroweak or less. So eventually, you'll see, if you, if you wait long enough in any patch, you're either going to die very, very soon, less than a second after the Big Bang, or you're going to see an electroweak uh, scale VEV for, for the Higgs. So that is essentially the idea, and the rest of the talk is going to be on how, how uh, what is the mechanism that actually causes this, or that, that is responsible for this. 
Okay, so let me uh, move on. By the way, if you have any questions uh, at any point, please feel free to, to ask them. Um, Just so. very quick question. So should I be thinking that actual like expansion of universe that we know that there is happening, should I be thinking that actually is happening after like uh, universe or patch with the uh, uh, electroweak mass has been chosen already by the mechanism? Well, it will be chosen early on, let's say. It will be chosen chosen like during or pre or like very early at inflation, let's say. For, I mean, you can you can have different ways of actually having that landscape. So we, I'm going to be mostly agnostic to that landscape, uh -huh. but I can but you can yes, you can show you can you can assume that's populated very early at inflation, uh, but then later when uh, when that uh, when that uh, pat if that patch is is not electroweak, uh, then uh, later on, but still very early at inflation, it's gonna undergo a phase transition or roll down. You'll see. I mean, depends a little bit on the initial conditions, um, and get a very large and negative uh, vacuum energy, wh wherein you will, it will very quickly uh, undergo a big crunch. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay, so so the how how is how is this mechanism achieved? So we're going to couple the Higgs to a uh, CFT uh, sector or, or, or a broken CFT with the potential for the dilaton, and that CFT uh, is going to be special in the, in, in the sense that it's going to be charged under the uh, electroweak uh, gauge symmetry, or uh, I mean the technic words are charged under the uh, uh, SU two cross U one. Um, and we're also going to assume uh, that the dilaton has a deep and negative minimum. This is typically the case for, let's say, Goldberger Y stabilization, but it just can also be any form of stabilization you want. We'll, we're going to use Goldberger Ys in the for the rest of the talk. So then, if I if I plot uh, the potential for this this uh, dilaton, uh, so chi is is the dilaton, this degree of freedom that. Uh, parameterizes the, the breaking of uh, uh, scale invariance. Uh, and here's the potential, and we see there's a deep and negative minimum. And we're going to assume that for any point in the landscape, that energy is much bigger than the vacuum energy anywhere, essentially, and, and, uh, and it's negative. So if, you're, if you reach this point, you die. You, you, you undergo a big crunch, and the universe, the, the patch uh, you're in uh, 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 very quickly uh, crunches. And, and, and furthermore, it, it just also doesn't, obviously doesn't expand. So it doesn't fill out the universe. Okay, so if the Higgs valve is going to be zero, then uh, uh, we, we don't have any back reaction of the Higgs on, on, on the sector. This is all we're going to have. Okay, but now if the Higgs valve is, uh, 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 or I should say also if it's, sorry, if it's uh, also if it's too large, as we will see, that will also be the only minimum uh, that we have. But if the the, the Higgs wave is electroweak or less, uh, there's going to be uh, uh, the dynamics of the Higgs are going to be such that there will be a second minimum generated very close to the origin, where the vacuum energy uh, contribution is is small. Okay, so this is essentially what happens. This is way overblown, as as you will see. It's uh, uh, you don't see the second minimum if you have a plot of the of the first one, and that second minimum is essentially uh, stabilized not by the Goldberger Y's st stabilization, but by the Higgs wave itself. So the Higgs back reacts on the sector through this coupling and generates a second minimum. And in that minimum, uh, the vacuum energy is not negative and large. Uh, it can be uh, positive or it can be zero. And in that case, you can have uh, 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 a normal expansion history, and that's where our patch uh, will be. So if you if you reach this point, you're alive. If you reach this point, uh, you die. Okay, this is this is the idea. Now, uh, just a brief reminder: uh, we uh, um, uh, we usually think of CFT uh, models in uh, a, 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 in their ADS dual or an RS model. So this is an extra dimensional model with with this metric. So Z is the extra dimension. You can see it's the it's the anti -decider. It's a warped throat, and it has uh, uh, the UV uh, brain, which uh, in the CFT language is the fact that the CFT uh, 
has a uh, a cutoff at some scale. It can be Planck, it can be uh, less, but that's where the cutoff is, and and that also is what provides the coupling of the CFT to gravity. And uh, uh, we ha and and so so this is one edge of the space, and on the other edge we have the IR brain, which is located at this R prime. And the position of the IR brain, once you integrate out this extra dimension, will be the, the, the dilaton, or one over the position is roughly the dilaton up to uh, normalization. Uh, and this Goldberger Y stabilization that I'm going to mention throughout the rest of the talk is just the fact that in the bulk, apart from gravity, we have a scalar, which we call phi Goldberger Ys. Uh, its mass is uh, uh, is epsilon. It's some it's it's a, some small uh, some small mass. Also, just uh, for for notation purposes, the k that I'm gonna use here it's one over r. It's the ADS one over the ADS radius, so it's the ADS curvature. Uh, so integrating out this bulk, we get uh, two terms, which are chi to the four and chi to the four plus epsilon, and balancing them against one another, we get this deep. Uh, this deep minimum that we had, sorry, where was it? Here. So this is basically, you have chi to the, uh, let's say, mi minus chi to the 4 plus chi to the 4 uh, plus epsilon, and this is the thing that stabilizes. And epsilon doesn't have to be uh, uh, very small, and obviously the smaller uh, epsilon is, the bigger hierarchy you generate between the cutoff and the position of this minimum, but we, we don't require uh, a hierarchy because we want this minimum to be very deep uh, with a lot of energy, so it can be uh, essentially anything. Okay, so that's the that's the usual Goldberger Y stabilization here. Just as mostly a reminder, uh, what we're going to do in our model is we're going to uh, uh, add the Higgs and the electroweak gauge into the bulk uh, as well. Uh, so this is uh, uh, corresponding to the to what I said that the CFT is charged under SU two. Uh, uh, the CFT. Um, uh, uh, the, the, if you want the technical arcs of the CFT are charged under C2, this is very similar to what happens, let's say, in QCD, where the quarks are also charged under under the C2 symmetry. So uh, uh, the way it's represented in the in the uh, uh, randall sandrum model is through the um, uh, through the fact that the Higgs and the electroweak gauge live also in the bulk, and we and the profile of the Higgs are, is going to depend on the mass. Uh, that we choose for it, and also remember, if you if you if you're not familiar with this, that the position of the IR brain is is in, in, in the dilaton itself. So what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, for the Higgs, it's going to have a source in the UV. Uh, by source, I mean that it gets a negative uh, mass squared that generates a VEV on the UV brain, uh, and and then f from that point on. The, the profile is determined by the mass, and uh, uh, and if you want, it runs from the UV to the IR, and on the IR it back reacts on the on the diloton, generating some uh, uh, potential for for the position of the IR, IR brain. So if you're moving around the IR brain, that this contribution will have a different dependence on on the position of the IR brain, and that's what's going to generate the second minimum that we are uh, uh, discussing. Okay, so this is. Uh, what we need to do, and we do it by appropriately choosing uh, the the bulk mass, which here instead of being close to zero, which is the case for the Goldberger Y scalar, here it's close to minus three. I mean the the bulk mass squared, if you want, uh, but not. I mean we're not really choosing minus three so that we are not tuned in any way, but rather there is some departure which is not hierarchical. So this alpha is is basically just not to fool ourselves that we are uh, we have some tuning anywhere okay so uh, on the UV brain the Higgs gets a VEV and that VEV is going to be scanned in the landscape so it's we're going to have different values for the for the Higgs VEV on the UV brain and on the IR brain uh, uh, if you run down solving the equations of motion due to this uh, bulk mass you can see that you get this sort of uh, 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 dependence uh, which is, if you, if you remember, chi is just uh, one over r prime. So you change the position of r, you change the value of the of the Higgs uh, on this on this brain. And uh, if you if you have standard terms uh, in the bulk and also 
uh, and also on the on the IR brain, for instance, if you have Higgs squared, Higgs to the fourth, you get uh, uh, some contributions to to your effective potential once you integrate the bulk. So these two terms uh, are very easy to explain. The first term is just the Higgs squared on the IR brain, and the second term is just the Higgs quartic on the on the IR brain or in the bulk. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, and the the fourth term is uh, a, a a a term that which could also exist. For instance, coupling uh, Higgs squared to uh, the uh, Goldberger Y scalar. So H squared phi Goldberger Y. You can see that it's almost the same as the Higgs squared term, but there's also a yeah slightly different dimension of chi. This can happen because of this phi Goldberger Y, which slightly changes throughout the bulk. So, uh, so this could be the Goldberger Y scalar or another mar marginal scalar with this dimension four minus epsilon or, or bulk mass epsilon. Okay, so uh, moving on to the to the CFT interpretation of this, uh, that's pretty pretty simple. So, as I said, we had we have a CFT which is charged under SU two. Uh, so, unlike the Goldberger Y case where there's only one operator, which is this singlet of O epsilon of dimension four minus epsilon, so a marginal, close to marginal uh, uh, singlet, which, uh, uh, the, so the dimension, of course, explicitly breaks the CFT or the scale invariance and therefore generates a potential to the dilton, which is not chi to the four, which can stabilize it. Here we have in an additional doublet uh, uh, operator. So if you want it's uh, 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 a, a bound state of this, uh, uh, in, in this illustrative picture, it's a bound state of the CFT, which is, which is a doublet under SU2. So that has the same quantum numbers as, as the Higgs and has a dimension of three, close to three, okay? So then in the UV, since we have a fundamental Higgs, which couples to this sector, we can write this form of potential. So, so the second term is the sim what you, you have in the Goldberger Weiss case. Uh, so simply an uh, O epsilon. Uh, so you turn on you turn on this, and that's once you run it down to the IR that generates the sky to the four plus epsilon. Here we also have the second term where the doublet operator of the CFT couples to the fundamental Higgs. Okay, in the UV. Now integrating out uh, uh, the CFT and running down. To the to the IR, we get this potential, and if you you see the terms, they they match exactly the terms that we uh, that we have written uh, uh, previously. So the two approaches match match completely. Okay, so so moving on, this is all just some hard work to get to get what we what we want. Now we can talk about the potential of the dilaton. So it has two contributions. It has uh, a contribution from from the Goldberger Wise, which is this potential, I switched here epsilon for delta for, for more completeness, uh, for to be more generic because this, this doesn't have to be uh, uh, the same operator that couples here, but, but delta can be epsilon also and that also works. Uh, and there is uh, the second contribution which, is, which comes from uh, the Higgs back reacting on chi or for, through the uh, coupling of the Higgs to this doublet uh, operator. And we have these three terms where we, now we, we made a choice of the uh, uh, signs of these couplings here, uh, and we choose them as such. Now, plotting this potential, uh, we see that, that uh, it satisfies exactly what we want. So first of all, just the Goldberger Wise piece is this huge potential. You can see the scale here is, is uh, TV, the minimum is at somewhere like 10 to the 12 TV for a nominal choice of, of parameters that we use. Uh, so this is at some huge scale, there is, uh, there is a very deep minimum with a, very, with a huge negative vacuum energy. Now this potential, if you, if you note how the, uh, how the chi dependence goes, uh, so, so I've written it here in slightly uh, in annoying form, excuse me. So this is the lowest chi dimension. So alpha is quite small. This is the lowest chi dimension. After that, there's this term. And after that, there is uh, this term. So the, it's a negative, positive, negative. So that 
may, uh, 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 so if you want negative, positive, negative, that means there's a minimum and a maximum generated sometimes, depending on the size of the parameters. So indeed, this is what you see when the Higgs VEV is uh, uh, close to the electroweak. This is a zoom in of this very, very close region. You can see here, the scales are order electroweak and there's a, there's a, a minimum generated, but when the Higgs VEV is too large, you can see that this minimum disappears. It becomes an inflection point, and after that, uh, uh, it, it just goes away completely. So this is because of, these, uh, uh, of, of the fact that these, these terms have a slightly different uh, uh, um, dimension, and at some point, uh, uh, you, you uh, uh, essentially, the, the, the minimum and the maximum coalesce, and they, uh, and they become an inflection point, and after that, there is uh, uh, it, the minimum just disappears. It just becomes a larger negative uh, slope. Sorry, uh, Michael. Can I ask a quick question? So, sure. Um, I mean, what's so special of a weak scale in this game? So there must be some. Oh, sort of I, I, I'll explain. This is in in two slides. Okay. Or even in one slide, maybe. Yeah, in two slides. So wait, two slides. Okay. So so just to. Uh, 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 show that we can we can derive all of these uh, quantities. We can find uh, this uh, critical value of the Higgs analytically, where uh, uh, so so the critical value of the Higgs, where the the minimum disappears. Uh, K is again the ADS curvature or the the uh, uh, ADS. Uh, uh, if you want, it's the 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 ADS. Uh, uh, well, the CFT. Uh, sorry, the 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 CFT cutoff. And close to the CFT cut of the same scale. Um, I'll explain in a second this dependence. As, as you will see, this will be the answer to Sung Wu's uh, uh, question. So the inflection point, we can also, we can also find that. And uh, we can find uh, the, the minimum of chi as a function of the Higgs value. OK, so stay with me. All of this will be, uh, will be clear. OK, so, so here's the slide answering Sung Wu's question. Where does, the, where does the electroweak scale come from? Why is there a hierarchy generated? Why is, it so, why is it so special? And the answer is, it's very simple, and it's very close to what Goldberger Wise did in their, in their paper, uh, in their original paper, which is basically use a marginal dimension to generate the hierarchy. So let me show you why. Okay, so here is the critical value of the Higgs as a function of, the, of some high scale, okay? And you can see it depends on this, on, on the, all of these couplings and dimensions. But this is roughly order one. This is roughly order one, so it's not interesting. Uh, but we, we see there's essentially this ratio of lambda 2 over lambda h epsilon. These are the two uh, 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 different couplings in the dilaton potential, the Higgs dilaton potential. And it scales like 1 over epsilon. So alpha is small, so it's roughly 1 over epsilon. So you can see. If we have lambda 2, which is smaller than lambda h epsilon, not hierarchically so, uh, then uh, the fact that there is a large dimension here generates a big hierarchy. So this is some small number to some very high power. So that, that is a very small number. And that's exactly how you get the, the you generate the hierarchy between the IR and the UV in the original Goldberger Wise. Uh, What's method. the value of k you have in mind? Oh, so, so we'll get there, but k, k can be large. I mean, the, the nominal values we use are about 10 to the 12 uh, TV. How precise that, the, the ratio of lambda needs to be? Sorry? How precise the ratio of lambda needs to be? Well, uh, it, it doesn't need to be, well, it doesn't need to be precise. It's just that different ratios will give you, obviously, uh, different uh, uh um but it raised to a very high power right you said yeah but it's 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 really the same it's really the same as the goldberger wise i mean you can you can explain any hierarchy you want this way the fact that we get the hierarchy that we have is is uh uh a a, a lucky a lucky case if you want but this could have this h crit could have been a larger number and then we would observe a 10 tv or a 10 GV Higgs or, uh, I don't know, 10 MeV Higgs. But it, I, I don't think that the fact that this, uh, uh, that the ratio needs to be precise to get the actual observed values is, is of any meaning because uh, 
there's nothing else that, that is tied into this ratio. Everything would just follow through the, exactly the same way. We would run the LHC and we would find the one TV Higgs or something like that. Uh, but, but nothing else changes. All the mechanism just follows through exactly the same way. So if you want the mechanism, doesn't care about this ratio. It, it, it just, can, I think of it, can I think of it just being analogous to Lambda QCD? I mean, that where, where F1 is... Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, that's, a, that's a good analogy. Yeah, Lambda QCD can be anywhere. If you want the, the one that we see in, in nature, we need some, some specific value uh, of, of beta, right? Uh, so if you change the beta, the, the, the beta you, you will get a different value. Uh, and if you change the couplings, you will get a different value. But, but, but that's sort of immaterial to, to the fact because for any value, you'll get a different Lambda QCD, but, but your, because Lambda QCD is not tied to any other scale, it's just some random scale, it's somewhere. It has to be somewhere. So, so exactly the same here, it has to be somewhere. Um, um, yeah, another, another good question. Uh, but yeah. no, I agree with Dark. In other words, we exponentiate the amount of you know ratio as exponent. But if you really want to pinpoint exactly the number that I want, you or you are you're preserving the amount of ratio or something you have to do. But the point of the dimensional transportation is not like comparing in you know respect respect to major, but just explaining how quickly you can actually yeah how you can get a small number, but not how you can get a specific small number. Exactly, you... exactly. Okay, I agree with that. But my question is then, uh, in your situation, it seems that the universe cannot be heated beyond the K. Okay, right. I'll 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 talk I'll talk about this point. Uh, okay. you, you I'll talk about this point. It's not true. You can you uh, I'll, I'll well, sorry, reheated beyond K. You said, or beyond H crit. Uh, beyond the K, because you want to keep the dilaton structure even at the finite temperature. Otherwise, you cannot you cannot apply this to the. I'll I'll, 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 I'll talk about I'll talk about the, the the cosmological history. So you'll see. I mean, you hopefully I'll get there. Yeah, I, I have time, so I'll I'll get to the cosmological history. We'll talk about exactly what what do we need. Okay, let me let me let me let me move on. Okay, so so the the first big. Uh, uh, problem with uh, uh, with this approach is essentially the, the the exact same problem that all other models uh, uh, face, uh, and that is the little hierarchy problem. So here it arises from the following fact that we so we have this SU two in the bulk, and we need to have SU two in the bulk because we want the Higgs to back react on the on the dilaton. So so. Since we want the Higgs to couple to the CFT, the CFT needs to be charged under SU2. Or if you want, since we want the Higgs in the bulk, it's a doublet of SU2, so therefore it must be accompanied by the, by the gauge bosons also in the bulk. And the fact that they're in the bulk means that they have uh, KK modes, and uh, uh, these KK modes are charged under SU2. This is a very standard search channel for, for the LHC. Uh, and we know they're roughly excluded up to the uh, three to four uh, TV range, slightly depending on the model. Uh, and in our, in our case, uh, it doesn't differ much from a very standard, uh, sorry, bulk uh, randall sandrum model. So therefore, it's excluded roughly in the same way. Uh, so therefore, what we need is we need somehow the IR scale to be much higher uh, well, not much, but at least an order of ten higher than 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 the uh, electroweak scale. Okay, so this is pretty similar to any other model. So uh, I'll get to. Uh, so, so it's not a, just to make sure I understand. So it's not a solution to the little hierarchy problem. It's not a solution to the little hierarchy problem. If you want, it's sort of a another big hierarchy solution in your arsenal. Maybe you can somehow. Uh, well, I'll talk about how to solve the little many of them. problem. I'll, 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 I'll talk about how you solve the little hierarchy problem in a second, uh, but uh, uh, it does further complicate this. But, but, uh, but first, it's, it's, it's a new like solution. Like all the models. Sorry? Like all the models. Exactly. Like all, it's like all the models, but uh, this one is very different. And I'll talk about exactly why is it different. You might be asking yourselves, this is an RS model. Why, how is it different from standard RS? Why do you need to go this way? 
although it's not really going all this way, it's just a flavor of the standard RS model, but uh, uh, I'll argue towards the end, why is it completely different? Why is it uh, uh, a uh, conceptually and experimentally different from an RS model, but, but I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Let me, let me move on. So this little hierarchy tells us that uh, in, our, in this minimum that's generated by the Higgs, the value of the Higgs VEV compared to the value of chi, so the value of chi is roughly the mass of, of these gauge bosons, there's slightly more, a few, a few times more, um, and chi is just the IR scale if you want, and so the, this ratio needs to be about a, a uh, order of magnitude, okay? So how, do you, how can you explain that? So, so first of all, you just go to your potential and you see what does that require, and what it requires is uh, small couplings, okay? So if we go to this potential, uh, we can see here's the dependence of chi mean on, on h, and uh, you can sort of immediately see that if lambda 4 is uh, slightly bigger than lambda 2, or lambda 2 is smaller than the quartic, if you want, uh, uh, by uh, roughly this amount, uh, then that is fine, that works. The biggest problem that gives us is that we need, uh, we need this, these uh, uh, Goldberger-Wise couplings and just the usual uh, coupling of the CFT, this lambda, which, which always is there, it's just the coefficient of the chi to the four, that needs to be small, okay? So I'm gonna return to this point and I'm gonna talk about what are the implications of this, how can you generate such small couplings, but once you do that, uh, you're fine, okay? I'll talk about whether you might be asking whether that's just tuning in, so one answer will be yes, another will be no, but I'll, I'll talk about this. But first, let's just see what this, this means uh, 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 experimentally and in terms of our model, okay? So we need small couplings. What that immediately tells us, the first prediction is that this means that the diloton is very light because uh, all its couplings are very small, therefore it's very light. Uh, and uh, it's coupled to the Higgs because it's, it, obviously there's a Higgs, uh, 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 the, 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 the Higgs generated uh, 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 qu quartics and quadratics. And so that generates a mixing, uh, which we uh, denote as the sine theta. Uh, and we can see that sine theta is, uh, goes like this. Uh, it's gonna be small and also the mass, we, which we can uh, uh, approximate in this form that's also going to be uh, small. Okay, well, I'll talk about how small in a second, but that's going to be the smoking gun prediction, the, the fact that there's a light diloton uh, mixing with the Higgs. Okay, so how does this diloton particle couple? So it couples to the Higgs through the mixing. It doesn't couple directly to the fermions. So if I didn't mention this at first, so excuse me, all of the, because all, all of the standard model, apart from the, the, the gauge bosons and the Higgs, all of them live on the UV. So this, is, this just means that this, the, they're not composite. So nothing is a composite of the, of, the, uh, uh, of the CFT. The only composites, the only partial composites are the, the gauge sector and the Higgs sector. And so therefore it doesn't couple directly to these fermions which live uh, uh, on the UV. It does couple to the gauge bosons that live in the bulk uh, from which the only truly important one, the rest are subdominant, is the coupling to photons. So there's a direct uh, coupling to photons and there are couplings uh, through the uh, mixing, okay? So let, let me move on. So, so the, the, uh, we, we do a parameter scan, which we basically run through the requirements that there is a minimum, that the minimum is actually where it, where it is, that the tunneling from one minimum uh, uh, to, to the deeper minimum is completely suppressed on cosmological time scale, etc. Uh, you can ask me after about the, uh, uh, the details of the scan. And this is what we find. We find that the diloton uh, is uh, lighter than 10 GeV. It's in the range uh, between, between a few hundred MeV to uh, uh, slightly above 5 uh, GeV. And the bran branch infractions are as follows. So these, you, if you want to separate it into two, because these are two different scans, but they they follow into the same uh, into the same pattern. They, the the only thing which they differ by is this number of colors in the CFT or the central charge of the of the CFT, uh, which in the in the bulk 
uh, is related to uh, the the dilaton kinetic term. So so, or the uh, once you integrate the bulk, it's going to be in the dilaton kinetic term. So we see that the main coupling is the main branching fraction is to photons, and all the rest uh, are through the Higgs. Okay, so just moving on, what does this mean in terms of phenol? So uh, we can see there there's basically uh, it's a very interesting scalar in the sense that it's a scalar that's mixed with the Higgs, but also coupled pretty strongly to uh, photons. In terms of uh, the mixing with the Higgs, it can be probed. Uh, so it, it is currently probed by uh, uh, mostly by rare decays uh, at rare B decays at uh, uh, LHCb. So the blue here corresponds to the blue scan, which is n equals three, in the numbers of the number of colors in the CFT, and the red scan corresponds to the red bound. Uh, so this, we can see that it's going to be probed by the uh, many different experiments that are being proposed, that, that, that are proposed and are uh, under discussion uh, here, but also partially by, by uh, the, uh, 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 by, by, by further data from uh, LHCb, which is expected. Uh, and through the other channel, through the photon decay, we can see that it leaves exactly in this gap uh, in terms of the photon decay, but it's partially probed by heavy ion co uh, collisions in the uh, in the LHC uh, and Bell two. Uh, I mean, it's going to be probed by Bell two, uh, and of course, it's going to be completely closed by uh, future uh, lepton colliders. Okay, so so this is in terms of phenol where we live, and just to briefly summarize. Uh, the in, uh, phenol at this intermediate step. Once we accept this little hierarchy, what we find is we uh, have heavy KK modes at the few TeV, which are pretty standard. Uh, and at below five or close to five GV, uh, we get a, uh, a light dilaton, which is produced mostly through Higgs mixing and through direct uh, photon couplings. Okay, so this is in terms of the simple phenol. Uh, and now, uh, let me turn to... Like, quick question? Yeah. Um, uh, I couldn't quite read the, the labels on your um, beta K plot, and I'm not terribly familiar with this. What is the, what is the beta K that... Um, is oh, that, so these, these, are, these are rare... rare uh, so this can be produced in, in rare BDKs that, that are not observed at LHCb, essentially. Okay. Wait, uh, so what would the decay channel be? Uh, beta... Dilaton plus? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I think it's with mu. Uh, I think it's dilaton to mu's, if I, if I remember correctly. Okay. okay so it's, okay. it's, yeah, it's in somewhere in the, in the decay chain. There's a dilaton produced and it decays to, to mu's, and it's something that you, you see. I, excuse me, I don't remember. But, but oh, no, I mean, it's a pretty standard, standard stuff, so I can, I can probably look it up in a second after. Gotcha, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Michael. Uh, yeah. I also have a quick comments. Like uh, I think Vera two have already published their first results. Like their sensitivity is uh, at one GV each. It's around like ten to minus three, something like that. I see. I see. So it's still not up to the place where 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 we are, but but get it, getting. The... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I I, I was not aware. Thank you. Okay, so 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 moving moving forward into into cosmology. So first, so the, what I described so far is just uh, the the how the theory looks and where whether that minimum exists. But the question is, uh, does it actually get populated, and does the mechanism really work as I described it? That if you are there, you are alive, and if you are not, you you are dead. So that is uh, that is this part uh, uh, about uh, cosmological dynamics. So here we need to really separate this into, uh, into cases. We need to think about what, what about the case where the Higgs VEV is very large. Okay, so let's start with that. Uh, so if the Higgs VEV is very large, you can separate uh, uh, how large it is into uh, uh, two main uh, 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 regions. So one would be where the, this Higgs VEV is so large, it's even larger than Hubble during inflation. Uh, so in this case, because this Higgs is 
The X value is also roughly the scale of the mass of the dilaton up to the, these couplings. That means that the dilaton is, has a mass which is bigger than Hubble, therefore it will just roll. It will just roll very quickly. Uh, it will not. Uh, uh, it will get get to the minimum quite quickly, and uh, it will crunch already during inflation. So if if that Higgs wave is so large, that's what uh, happens. Now, uh, in the second case, the Higgs wave is, is large, but not so large. And so it's uh, still smaller than Hubble during inflation. In this case, it gets stuck during inflation. It doesn't, it doesn't roll. Uh, so if you want, it gets stuck here. And after what, afterwards, the, there, is, uh, uh, there is reheating. So uh, after, after, uh, uh, after this happens, there, the, there's reheating. So the CFT is reheated to the thermal phase. So it's in, in the RS picture, it's going to be in the black hole uh, phase. So this has been uh, 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 discussed a lot in literature, starting with uh, uh, Rotazzi, uh, Criminelli, and Nicolis, but in early 2000s, but, but also quite recently, it was, uh, this, I mean, these phase emissions have been uh, discussed a lot. And very simply, what happens here is because we have this Higgs coupling, which is uh, a very, because it's h squared, chi squared, roughly, it's a very relevant operator. If you have a relevant operator in the CFT, the CFT, uh, it's going to run in the IR at some point. And at, at, at that point, uh, uh, this CFT will just be badly broken. And what that does is that uh, it, uh, uh, it always causes uh, this uh, uh, black hole phase to transition into the uh, into the broken phase. So if you want, what happens here is you're, you're stuck here, you're going to get reheated, so there's, there's a, a uh, black hole formed, or if you want the potential curves upwards, and then that, that phase is long-lived, so you're going to be very uh, super-cooled. Uh, but, this, and this has been studied a lot in literature, if you, if, you, if you have relevant operators, you always transition at the end, and the scale with, uh, where you transition is above uh, the scale where this relevant relevant operator gets large, and that's roughly the Higgs wave, because that's typically the only scale you have up to these small lambdas that that change it slightly. So you will always transition once you transition, and you transition around the temperatures of around electroweak. Uh, you transition and crunch. So that happens very rarely on uh, uh, at at infl at uh, at our at our history. So therefore, you never reach. Uh, if you start with a large Higgs wave, you never reach. Uh, a uh, large universe. Okay, so uh, that is the easier case. Sorry, the more so, so the phase, the fate of the phase transition is independent of the dilaton web size. Yes, yes, because because of uh, approximate conformality, right? Uh, you only really care about the size of the coupling. So the 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 uh, uh, size of the instanton or the the bounce action is just going to be one over the coupling to some scale. And when that coupling blows up, the transition is immediate. Okay, and the, cu the coupling does blow up because you have a, a, a very relevant uh, uh, operator. Okay, so, so this is in worst case electroweak. Obviously, if the Higgs wave is much larger than electroweak, uh, then, then it's even earlier. Okay, so that's, that's essentially what happens here. Uh, you can also sort of see what happens for our universe as well. Um, but uh, um, I'll talk about that in, in a second. So the, the other case is that you have a large but positive Higgs mass squared. In that case, uh, you essentially just don't have this contribution. And it's essentially the same case as this one, but this point, you never reach this point. So you can, uh, 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 you can stay super cooled forever and actually not die. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a problem in our mechanism. Um, and so the thing that you need to do is you, ne you, wanna, you need to put this uh, 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 thing by hand, okay? And I'll explain how. So what you need is you, wanna, you want to, uh, you, you can already see, you want to have another relevant operator, which is unrelated to the Higgs. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, can be the Goldberger wise itself. This can be another operator uh, that it, it won't change any of the dynamics we described here. Uh, in, and it just means there's a third operator of the CFT that, that is turned on that is, uh, that is relevant, okay? So let me skip this. So 
what, what, what will happen is, as I described, there's going to be a big departure from CFT or ADS and the IR, and the black hole phase disappears, and, and from a super cooled, uh, uh, from a super cooled solution, you get a uh, turnover, uh, and the nucleation temperature in this case will be roughly the same order as the scale of the CFT breaking. So previously it was roughly the Higgs wave, but when you don't have the Higgs wave, you need to have uh, an alternative which is very similar. So one way, a, a the most minimal way maybe would be just to put also QCD in the bulk. Uh, and in that case, uh, QCD can be uh, the fact that QCD confines and gets a contribution to the vacuum energy can have, can essentially turn on uh, uh, a relevant contribution. So chi to a power, which is less than four. Uh, and that just comes from the running uh, of uh, this QCD coupling in the bulk. I'm not going to talk about this. If you want to ask me about this, you can, you, you can do so, but this has been uh, described in several papers, sorry, uh, already from a few years ago by uh, uh, Geraldine Servant's group and also uh, Pomerol's group. Uh, they did it for, for just standard RS, but, but it works very similarly here. Uh, uh, and so that would, that would solve it, but also you can just do it in completely uh, uh, without, without really caring. You can, you can just do it uh, uh, by any operator you turn on, which, which is less than chi to the four. Okay, so, so moving on to uh, uh, what are the scales of actually the problem, and, and this is generated, uh, what, what are the, what, how, how far ahead do we solve uh, the hierarchy problem? And this is m mainly constrained by the fact that we need to consider the cosmological constant, okay? So we need to ask what happens if you uh, have different values of the cosmological constant in, in these different uh, uh, vacua, okay? So um, the, 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 the simple answer to that is, is the following. So if the cosmological constant is higher than, uh, uh, is such that the Hubble scale uh, associated with it is uh, uh, higher than chi star, so chi star, let me, just tell, tell you what it is. Chi star is essentially the scale where the CFT breaks. So for, for, for instance, for the QCD solution, it was uh, about 10 to 100 uh, MeV, but it can be uh, uh, essentially anything as long as it's uh, below the electroweak scale. So when the temperature reaches that scale, you always transition, no matter what. And so your only really requirement about the CC is that you actually reach that temperature. Because if your Hubble is larger than that temperature, you have the, uh, the, the sitter temperature, which is higher than this. And therefore, you will never reach that temperature and you will be eternally, uh, uh, eternally inflating. Okay, so that means uh, that uh, as long as all your landscape is such that all the Hubbles are smaller than this uh, chi star, any, for any CC you have in the landscape, uh, you, your mechanism works. Okay, so our mechanism works, and uh, that implies a bound on the possible values of the cosmological constant. And if you're very fair with yourselves, that's also the cutoff for the Higgs sector because the Higgs sector contributes to the cosmological constant. All the standard model, if you want, contributes. So that's the total cutoff for uh, for the uh, uh, for the standard model. If you're thinking about the QCD solution that we find, then roughly uh, the highest cutoff and the value of the CC that you can have is about 10 to the 5 TeV, because that, if you, if you remember, chi star was between 10 and 100 uh, MeV. But for, for a generic solution, it's only constrained by the fact that you can actually see the Higgs web and that chi star is not uh, below, so, so the, the, the uh, 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 CFT is still unbroken for, for chi's which are the chi's uh, we discussed in the potential, so the minimum actually actually is there, uh, then uh, that means that your uh, cutoff has to be less than 10 to the 7 TV, so that's just the geometric mean of uh, M Planck and the electroweak scale. Okay, so that's, that's basically for this mechanism to work. So uh, uh, just, just a very brief answer about what happens with our sector. You, you can indeed reheat to a much higher temperature, but uh, below the uh, Higgs web at about 
uh, 10, uh, 10 GV or so, or slightly below, you will you will transition to uh, 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 you will you will transition to this minimum. Okay, so nothing is nothing is ruined by reheating to a much higher temperature. But that that was the answer from that I owed you from before. Let me just uh, finish. Uh, how much time do I have? I have a few minutes. So let me just explain uh, the last part, which is the the part about the tuning. Okay, so. Uh, we, we, we have, so if you remember, we have this little hierarchy that resulted uh, in the lightness of, of the diloton. Uh, and the, the, the worst of the uh, constraint that this uh, put on the theory was this lambda uh, being smaller than 10 to the minus five. So how is this related to tuning? So if, if we do it in the most naive way, which is we parameterize the 5D contributions to this uh, coupling, uh, we just do it in an NDA form. You get a loop factor and you get the 5D uh, cutoff around. So this is the 5D cutoff around the IR scale. Uh, we see that we need the 5D cutoff to be uh, around the value of the IR scale. So that means our, our IR scale is already uh, 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 above, above the cutoff. But, but remember this guy is also beyond the TV scale. So, so that means this 5D cutoff is also beyond the TV scales. So the, the one way which we think this can be solved is if you supersymmetrize uh, the bulk and the IR. So that will be a, uh, 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 if you have a supersymmetry in the bulk, it's badly broken on the UV brain. So all your standard model is not supersymmetric, uh, but uh, close to the IR brain, the supersymmetry is, is is a good theory. It's broken on the on the IR brain with the lambda five being the Susie breaking scale on the IR brain, uh, so that that works and that is not excluded first of all, but it, and it does change the pheno. So it will be uh, a completely standard model like uh, fermion sector, uh, whereas for the electric sector you're gonna have uh, 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 you're gonna have their their uh, supersymmetric partners the electric kinos. Uh, and the KK spectrum is going to be supersymmetric. So it's going to be a, an interesting form of split SUSY, which is in this case uh, uh, needed to solve the little hierarchy problem. Uh, so this is what we are currently doing. We're thinking of how this model actually works if you put SUSY in it. Uh, but just to summarize, because I don't have much time, if you do now consider the full thing that I told you, uh, the full thing will be uh, just the following. There's light diloton in the IR. There's an electric KK, KK spectrum, which is maybe uh, uh, supersymmetric, whereas, but, but SUSY is uh, broken for anything else at a very high scale. Uh, so maybe QCD is in the bulk, or maybe it's something else. In the case where the QCD is in the bulk, you also expect KK gluons. Uh, and in the cosmology side, you get an interesting CFT phase transition at uh, around 10 GeV. Uh, that also involves electroid physics, so that's interesting to consider for uh, uh, say biogenesis or also uh, gravitational waves because it's a first order uh, uh, phase transition. Okay, that's uh, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Thank let's you. let's uh, unmute ourselves and then give Michael a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you. That was uh, that was very interesting. Does anyone have any? questions, you can feel free to unmute yourselves and ask. Yeah, so I'm, I'm somewhat confused about the phase transition part. Yeah. So very, very, very nicely. Uh, in the minimal like RS setup, uh, regardless of the field content in the work, uh, the generic uh, Fat size of the web of the dilaton is roughly of the order of IR cutoff scale. I mean, I can make it slightly lighter. Well, the you mean you mean the, the 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 value in the the value in the minimum? That's what you mean. So the, there is a location of the minimum, and there is a curvature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The value of pi at the minimum. Yes. Yeah, there, That's right there. Uh, yes, yeah, so the curvature controls the mass of the dilaton, and but then the location controls roughly the IR IR cutoff scale. Yes, yes, that's true. And, uh, and naively, very naive. Of course, there's this super cool 
uh, thing that we have to take it up very lively. If I starting from the low temperature, so that I, I I am in the IRS configuration. If I start to heat up the system around that temper that that location, then it will go through the phase transition into hot phase, meaning the black hole phase. Now, yeah. of course, we have to take into account the super cold nature. If I start from the hot hot phase and see when it actually tunnels through the yeah, so that's because of that, there is a hierarchy of actual temperature that the uh, decreation temperature it, it occurs versus when you actually naively expect to happen, right? So, sure, yeah, I, I remember that in one of the plot, you had the location being like 10 to the 10 or 12 TeV range, yes, yes, but you are not yeah. there. You assume you assume you start at some random point in the potential, so somewhere, okay? So, so you suppose you have. You can you 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 have different points that start at different at different positions in this potential. So suppose uh, you will eventually have even uh, maybe a few points that uh, that are scattered. So they're scattered along this potential. Let me let me show you. So no, sorry, this is too far. Here. So yeah. so this is where let's say the minimum is. But suppose yeah. you have points, different pat patches, which are in different in different positions. They are they are somewhere misaligned from. Okay, now if the mass is too small, you just get stuck during inflation. And once you're reheated, it also reheats the this dilaton sector because it's coupled to the Higgs. So if you reheat the standard model, you, you will reheat it, right? Sure, but this entire picture is based on zero temperature RS configuration. In order to change Sure, sure. Right. But you, you you're not moving because you're I mean all this potential is completely unimportant to you because the mass is less than Hubble, okay? So you're just stuck at some initial point, okay? So you are at, at some chi zero, okay? Right. You're not in the minimum, okay? Now, if you, if you reheat it, okay, and you, and you reheat it to a temperature which is more than the sky zero, okay, which is, the, which is the case we are describing, then you will immediately form a black hole which is much higher. The temperature is gonna be around the scale of the reheating temperature, right? So the, this is what the Hawking temperature will be. So you'll, you'll, you will essentially completely so you have some IR, essentially on the ADS picture, you have some IR brain somewhere. Now you're throwing tons of energy on it. it you're, you're just not, you just don't care where that IR brain started because oh, there's okay. just so much energy. All right, that... so then just to, just to then match to what I, the picture I have and what you're trying, I think I, I, I'm starting getting. So let's start from the, this big, uh, deep uh, thing. But if I started with the actual true minimum, then I need to bump up a lot of energy, meaning I have to hit a lot to actually get out of the phase and then go into the black hole phase. But if I started the already pretty heated up version of the... Right, system, exactly, exactly. Can quickly, okay. Yeah, um, you start somewhere. You don't start in the minimum. I mean, you will eventually get to the minimum if you if you roll, but but you start somewhere in the potential. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, okay. Good. okay thanks. Great. Any other questions before we uh, take a quick break? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that this is already the discussion after the break. I, I'm sorry. I, I heard this. This is that was great. Thanks, Samu. I, I just had a, a small. I, I think I lost track of um, all of the symbols. Uh, when you were talking about the, the supersymmetry breaking scale, I think you had an upper bound on it. Um, what was the what was the upper bound? Oh, it's around the chi. So it's around the IR scale. So it means the C, the the uh, the, the, the IR brain is already quite supersymmetric. So the supersymmetry breaking scale is, is, it needs to be slightly smaller than chi to explain these small couplings. Okay, okay you can see it, you can see it here, okay? Yeah. So this, this is, uh, sorry. Yeah. Cool, okay, okay. Cool, um, thank you. So, so, all right, if there are no more burning questions, then, uh, yeah, let's take a, a five minute or so dance break, um, and then uh, can come back and have a more extended casual discussion with Michael. Yeah, thank you. Thank so you. I'm, I'm, thank you. I'll just mute myself, but I'll, uh, uh, I'll be here. Okay. okay. Thank Seth, are you there? 